Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Winamp. Subscribe to the Daily Gizwiz and all your favorite podcasts with the ultimate media player. Download it for free at winamp.com. Video bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for the Daily Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1185 for Friday, September 24th, 2010. The Moby Blue! The Daily Gizwiz is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. Go to Squarespace.com, and for 10% off, use the offer code Gizwiz. And now, get ready for Dick! Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the border groves, and the mome wraths outgrabe. Beware the jub-jub bird, my son, and the things that uh, go round and round. Beware the vorpal blade and the jabber walk. And whatever you do, stay well away from Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Very scary in there. They're geeky and they're goofy, together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. Oh, and it's Gadget Warehouse. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is the start of our show, Dick D. Bartolo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is it over? Can I talk now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How you doing? I'm well. How are you? You're doing okay, Dick. Oh, Paul Lynn, welcome to the oh. warehouse. <laughs> You're very nice, very kind. Uh, what is going on in here? What is what is? It's dark. It's damp. It's spooky, and it's full of crap. What is this? Yeah. What well, is this? This place? is crap that has died. That one day was a bright meteor shining uh, in the sky. Uh, and now it has crashed into the sea. Oh, uh, yes. What is it? <laughs> what is it indeed? Well, you know, today it's, it's interesting. Every, every once in a while I get an email from someone saying, was there ever a gadget that you talked about as something really great in an early Daily Gizwiz that today is... Sitting on a shelf in the gadget oh. warehouse. Yeah, well, we've been doing this show long enough. I mean, with 1,185 oh, yeah. shows under our belt, well, we must have had something that was not When safe. I saw this in the warehouse and I knew that this past week you're going to be doing the uh, iPod Nano, I thought, whatever happened to Moby Blue? Do you remember Moby Blue? Oh, yeah, we did that. How, when did, what episode was that? <laughs> that we, Leo, let me look. It is... Uh, that, that, um, Jesus. episode 17. Wow. But that was a really cute device. The only negative yeah. was if you sat on it, it was kind of, it was a, it was a cube, right? It, it's about the size of a little caramel piece of candy. Oh, I'm, I'm looking here, Leo. A uh, length of this episode, six minutes. <laughs> Good. The, the intros now are. Yeah, are at we haven't done a six minute show in years. <laughs> right. So the little Moby Blue was it's, it's built as it may nano. still be the world's smallest MP3 player. It's kind of like a nano, uh, yes. but it's a cube. It's a cube, OLED screen. Yeah. Uh, it had four lines of type. It had a built in FM tuner, built in microphone. Oh, that's different. Yes. Uh, it was $100 for the 512 megabyte version or $130 for a one gigabyte version. Now, the website was Moby Blue America. That's gone. If you go there, it says this website cannot be found. Um, I, I Googled it in Amazon. There are still some places selling Moby Blue devices. However, under the comments, it looks like they went out of business in 2007 uh, because someone wrote the one man Moby Blue America office is gone. And now it looks like Moby Blue overseas is gone. Uh, Moby, Blue, Moby Blue in Korea 
uh, also looks like it's gone out of business. Um, but the thing is, last week I found the instruction book, couldn't find the device. Normally I find the device, not the instruction book. This week I found the device. I found the instruction book, but I can't find the charging cable. So this is so tiny, it charges using the earphone jack. So it was a special USB to earphone charging cable, and I cannot find it. And one of the original iPods worked that way. I think the shuffle used to charge through the headphone jack. I actually tried the uh, shuffle cable on it. It won't charge this unit. But it really was neat. And it was also kind of odd shaped. It came with a little uh, necklace thing to wear. Oh, it. I remember that. And yeah. 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 And, and it's like your iPod Nano now. The earphone contains the antenna for the FM tuner. But it was really, it was really uh, cleverly designed. And for its time, very reasonably priced. I think only Walmart sold it. So it was very aggressively priced. And just as they went out of business, they were coming out with a two gigabyte version for 160. And Leo, how many gigabytes is the Nano now? Uh, let's see, 160, roughly the same price, 179 or 100, let's say 150. So 10 bucks less and you get eight gigabytes. Eight gigabytes. Eight okay. gigabytes. So you get and four times the memory. Four times the memory. And it does for a lot more. Left. This is not a touch screen. Right. This does not have a pedometer. This doesn't have well, the little icons you can slide around. But the, but the Nano doesn't have uh, a microphone. You can't record on it. Oh, so. okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you so know, maybe I think that we was, should chip and bring this back. That was a nice little device. Well, it, it, it the iPod killed it because. Uh, yes. And I don't even. I mean, I guess there still are non-iPod MP3 players, but it's such a small market compared to the yeah. iPod. That yeah, The iPod, you know, they do it right, and they really, they, they own the marketplace. Own For it. a long time, Sansa was making some headway. I don't know if they are anymore or not. Uh, and that kind of made Steph sense because SanDisk, uh, who makes the Sansa, made, mem made the memory chips that go in. Yeah. So they could get, you know, they could at least make it affordable, you know. Yeah. So what time is it? <laughs> Let me just check my new watch, it's called the iPod Nano. I'm just clipping this here to my collar. I predict uh, in the future, instead of wearing neckties, uh, yeah. uh, men what will... Look at this. This is going to be the new look. Let me just uh, get the microphone out of the way. So okay. I'm going to button my top button there. Okay. Like this. It's been a while. It's a little... You know, this diet thing. I think the shirt has yeah. shrunk. Mm -hmm. It's a okay. nice shade of red, though. <laughs> Now watch. See? Your face matches your this, iPod color. I think this is the new um, neckwear. It's not nice. a bolo. No. No. It's uh, it's your it's your uh, eye tie. Yeah. Can you sleep on it? Is it inflatable? <laughs> no. <laughs> I like it. It's the eye tie, new from uh, Apple. Wow. I think it's good. And just ask me what time it is. Hey, what time is it? I can't tell. It's. Oh, uh, well, if you have a mirror, my chin is obscuring it. It's the only <laughs> negative on the eye tie. So, how's that scale thing going for you, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never read another letter again. The eye tie. Unless it Apple. says, Dear Thin Leo. Yeah, skinny. Hey, Skinny. I, I can see the diet's it's really working. You've lost. This is a good look. I think this is how people it's you. are going to dress. Good. Leah, when you go to Africa to talk about, there you go. There's the official, the official, the official photo. Hello, that I am president of Internet. You know, it has a authority. It, it's, it's dignified. It's, uh, like, yeah, it's gray it's flannel. Dignified. Isn't that hat gray flannel? And it's very, very slimming. Very businesslike, very businesslike. Logo. This could be technology. my, not merely my Vuvuzela, but my rod and scepter. It could be the honorary in badge one. of office. It's one. It's two things in one. <laughs> it's my sash. Hello, I'm here to show you the future. This is how people are going to dress in the future. Yeah. And it's and one of the few times I'm glad I'm not going to be the part of that future. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I live in the past. 
You know, Speaking if you were living in the past, do you, I went to see The Tingler. Wait a minute. I remember that. That was the one that electrified your seat, right? Yes. It, it was, was so very, scary it made you pee your pants? Uh, yeah, do you know, William Castle used to make dreadful, right. Right. low-budget movies. And everyone had to have some sort of a gimmick to get you in the theater. And The Tingler was that they would wire some of the seats. And the object was that if the tingler attacked you, the only way to drive the tingler away was to scream. Well, I, the theater I saw it in, they didn't have enough money to wire the seats, but it was very funny. <laughs> they, they hired someone, a woman in the first row, who had a, a tingler embedded on her. One, just so, one tingler. One tingler. <laughs> but she ran up the aisle screaming, trying that to pull everybody. the scared everybody. She really did. It was very unexpected. It was a lot of fun. You know, was, I don't know if they still have this at, uh, was it uh, Universal City or uh, maybe it was Disneyland where they had the movie that you'd watch be kind of like 3D, but then they'd also be like fans oh, and weird yes, things. It's, in Disney, it was Disneyland, one of the it? most effective thing is the 3D movie A Bug's Life. That's it. Yeah. And, and and the announcer at the end of the thing says, ladies and gentlemen, please stay in your seat until the bugs leave. <laughs> and then you feel all these, feel these you things feel going them. right to left underneath your butt. And the funny thing and is it starts at the front of the theater. They're smart because yeah, they have it start at yeah. the front and it comes up in a wave. And you could tell the people are going, ha, 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 yeah. in Whoa, front of you. Yes, yes. It's yes, like, what, yes. what, what? Oh, I feel it. I know. It's great. It's great. It's very And funny. they also did it uh, at the Kodak Theater, Honey, I Shrunk, the audience, where the machine accidentally makes thousands of mice. That that's the one That's the, the one I saw, yeah. 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 Yes, and it escapes into the audience, and they have little rotating springs under the seat. <laughs> right. But like you said, they do it section by section. So and suddenly you see an entire section, whoa, jump out of it. Yeah, it's great. I love I love Disney. They do such great They're, imaginative things. Well, that's why they call them Imagineers, and that's why I'm dressed this way. I want to be an Imagineer. You are. You are. You, you are think I could get in? Imagination. Hi. That's what, that's I'm here to apply for the Imagineers. <laughs> what, what, can I get a job here? I have an imagination. Be, oh, yeah. You would be snapped up in a minute. I think there'd be no problem. No. No, you. That's what I like about it. It's, it's great. It says you have technology. Oh, yeah. There you I go. live there. technology. I have batteries in my pants. <laughs> Before we go on, let's talk about a technology that could change your life. Squarespace.com. Oh. I know it's changed. It's changed your life. Yep. They did your website, redid it. That's the new Gizwiz site. And what a great job they did. But it's not just you know, Sarah Lane. Uh, Kev, our friend Kevin Rose uses Squarespace for his site. Uh, in fact, if you go to squarespace.com right now, you'll see and go to the examples, you'll see hundreds of famous people, normal people, all kinds of people, brands, movies, music that use Squarespace. So what is Squarespace? Well, it's, they call it, they say, the place where exceptional sites begin. Uh, essentially, it is hosting. So they, they run the servers. And on the servers, they run the special Squarespace software, the content management system. And uh, the content management system is what makes Squarespace so different from everybody else. You get both, by the way, for as little as $8 a month. Hosting plus this great software. Now, Squarespace, of course, includes fantastic templates, but they don't look templated because you can drag and drop, point and click. You don't have to be a CSS or JavaScript script wizard. You can make that template look all your own. And yet, if you do know CSS and JavaScript, Squarespace lets you customize up the wazoo, to coin a phrase. They also have a great iPhone app, social and media integration, forms, uh, photo galleries, this is important for me, seamless blog importing. I can start with an existing blog, import everything, and I'm never stuck with Squarespace. If sometime I want to change, no problem. I can export everything also and move it to another blog. It is really fantastic. Great stats, too. Look, I want you to try it free. Two weeks free. Just go to squarespace.com slash gizwiz. You don't even need to use a credit card. There's no commitment whatsoever. You'll be up and running in 30 seconds. And then once you try it, if you decide you want to buy it, as I said, prices start as low as $8 a month. For the full community system, 
which includes a bunch of editors, a ton of bandwidth, all the stuff you'd ever need for a big commercial site, $50 a month. 50 And when you use the coupon code GIZWIZ, you get 10% off the price of that site, not just for one month or two or one year, but for the life of the site. Squarespace.com slash GizWiz. It is fantastic. Give it a try. We thank them so much for their support of the Daily GizWiz Show. And a letter. Boy, we have not heard from Ofer in a long time. Ofer! Ofer uh, Benary, Lansing, Michigan. Hi, Dick and Leo. On Daily Gizwiz 1175, you talked about Humphrey Bogart Gosh. and the African Queen. That's right, sweetheart. I hate leeches all over my body. Leeches. Yes, that was the only movie Bogart won an Academy Award for. Uh, I he thought was nominated. Much. Yeah. Yeah, he was nominated for Kane Mutiny and Casablanca, but only won for African Queen. You may not know Catherine Hepburn wrote a book titled Making of the African Queen about the experience. It was the subtitle that had much more to say. The subtitle was how I went to Africa with Bogart, Bacall, and Houston and almost lost my mind. Oh, boy. It's a very good read I if you're a fan of classic movies or true life travel tales. The banter between you, uh, between you two is worth more than any gadget info. Looking forward to the next 1,200 episodes. You know what? That's really my, a good book for me. How I went to Petaluma <laughs> and lost with my Leo, marbles. Lisa, <laughs> and almost lost my mind. <laughs> oh, for thank you. Good to hear from you again. I got to get that book. I think it's an older book. I, I don't think that's. It that's, is. I yeah. believe it is too. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know if yes. it's still in print, but I, 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 it reminds me. I've always wanted to read that, so I think yeah. I will. Ricardo, we have come to the end of a week. Mm. Yes, and you have set a new high bar for dignity. I have That's almost, all. maybe not almost, lost my mind. I would say that I agree wholeheartedly <laughs> and 100%. 100%, sweetheart. So if you, yeah. uh, if you want to play along with what the heck is it contest, what do you have to do to play that game there, Dickie? Well, all you do, Leo, is just go to gizwiz.biz yeah. and... Click on that what the heck is it link that Myra designed. Oh. You'll see an item. Guess what it is. Guess what it really is. Or make up a funny, silly, stupid answer. You mean the hot dog holder? Yeah. Well, I can't say yes and no. Mm. Can't say yes and no, Leo. Mm. But you could win mm. one of the up to 36 autographed Mad Magazines. And you'll be getting the November December issue cool. if you win. Cool. Now that's a good site to go to for uh, notes about everything we talked about this week. Uh, Dick yep. puts that up. All the stuff he does in World News Now. Uh, yep. All the stuff he does on Dave Graveline Show and the Alan Handelman yep. Show and all the other shows he yep. he does instead of doing the Gizwiz. <laughs> well, I guess when you pay somebody a buck fifty an episode, you can't expect exclusivity. Oh, thank God for Lisa. It's up to two <laughs> bucks an hour. Yay, Yay Lisa! Yay, yeah, when Lisa. we get that new Twitter feed in, you'll be getting a dollar fifty more. Whoa! I'll split it with you. Dick, lots okay. of fun. Enjoy your weather. When is the meetup again? Uh, the meetup, uh, we're looking uh, October 10th. If you want to join us at the meetup, send me an email, Dick at gizwiz.biz, put meet up in the subject line. We're talking about Boat Basin Cafe, West 79th Street, Manhattan, Sunday, October 10th, 2 to 4 p.m. Join us if you can. Well, thank and you. let us know if you're coming. Thank yeah. Myra for putting that together. And I'll together. see That's you great. before that, pal. I will be right next to you. I hope you'll be wearing that hat. 
<laughs> I'll be wearing my new iPod Nano necktie. It's Nano all the necktie. rage. Yeah, it could be a belt buckle too. Oh, I didn't. Uh, maybe I should yeah, get another yeah. one. What time? What, just well, ask me what time is it? Uh, Eleven. Wow, we just fifteen episodes from episode twelve hundred. Dick, I will see you on Monday. I'll be here. Mm -hmm. D A I L Y.